turn that into someone. Conflict of interest certificate. Congratulations. Yeah. Finished in January. Okay, I'm going to welcome you all to the uh, finance committee meeting of March the 11th, 2015. Could I have a roll call, please? Yes, present we have Marilyn Jordan, Joan Pontes, uh, David Hurd, Tom Orthen, Alice Bailey, Jeffrey Langan, Donna Bronk, and Bonnie Jean Cattulli. Dominic. As my mic is on, can I get my clothes on? Is Jeffrey the mic on? My mic's on. I'm good, we're good? Okay, great. All right, do I have any citizens' participation at this time? Um, I have invited both of the petitioners in tonight. Um, I have one here. I've been unable to communicate with the fire department. <laughs> I have tried. I have had a great conversation with his secretary on several occasions. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know what to say. Try I know. You, huh? Try nine one one. I don't know if anybody got to the board of selectmen meeting last night. Yeah. Did any of you go to the Board of Selectmen meeting last night? No? No? Okay. Um, it was too late for us to combine because by the time we, st we conversed on Thursday afternoon, it's too late to post and they're not open on Friday. So for a Tuesday meeting, it makes it very difficult to get these agendas and any last minute stuff because there's four days in between that aren't, you, you can't utilize. They have a practice tonight, which may be why. Okay. All right, well. And a mandatory practice. Oh, all right. I just, you know, a communication of at least acknowledge that. Um, but I mean, I will put the invitation back out there and see if we can't get him at um, another meeting. If they want us to render an opinion, we at least need an explanation. Okay. So on that note, I am going to bring forward, let's see, um, Diane Murphy. And Diane Murphy is representing on Article 21. We've met before. Last year, I believe. <laughs> yes. Good evening, and I um, want to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you this evening. Um, I have a pack of materials to um, give you so you can see exactly what we're talking about. Lovely. Thank you. My name is Diane Murphy, and I'm one of three trustees of the Beaver Meadows Homeowners Association. Um, and we are very hopeful that you'll consider the warrant to have our streets accepted by the town. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with our neighbor, I'm going to put my reading glasses on. I do better with those. For those of you who are not familiar with our neighborhood, um, we are a diverse residential neighborhood with two cul-de-sacs. And you'll see in your packet um, the layout plan that is now on file at the planning department uh, of the layout. I've also included a map that was um, completed in 2004. Um, and that's a little bit easier to read. The type is a little bit so I've included both of those uh, maps. Um, our residents are good citizens of Wareham. We're registered to vote. We volunteer to help the town. We have town sewerage. The US Postal Service delivers mail to our houses. School buses pick up our kids at their homes. Our utilities are all underground. Um, we keep our neighborhood clean and orderly and in lieu of street lights, the homeowners maintain lanterns in front of our houses. So that means that if, we, if our streets are accepted, the town will have no responsibility to put street lighting in or pay <coughs> the cost of lighting the streets because the homeowners take that responsibility. 
Our lanterns are on. Um, uh, light sensitive um, sensors and they come on uh, automatically as dust comes about and then they go off automatically um, in the morning when the light, the sun comes up. So uh, that would be an expense that we would not ask the town to um, accept at all. Um, as you know, we've been pursuing this for at least a year and a half. <laughs> Um, last year, last fall, JC Engineering completed all our layout plans. That map, the top map is the uh, layout plan, and that's on file now in the planning department. And we also asked JC Engineering to expose the bounds, um, and they did so on October 23rd, 2014. Um, they are all visible, they're all marked. They have um, orange spray on top of the, the markings and there's stakes sticking up to show exactly where they are. They are all in place. Um, we, Charles Rowley came out to inspect our streets and uh, make suggestions and he inspected the bounds, saw that they were all in place and I've given you a copy of his email stating that we have met the obligation to have the meets and bounds in place. <clears throat> that, uh, uh, on October 27th, Charles Rowley came out again and um, we walked the streets um, with Bill Andrade, who I don't know if people are familiar with him, but he's a uh, paving contractor here in town. Um, and we were discussing uh, exactly what needs to be done. The big thing was having the meets and bounds in place and the other issues are relatively minor, is the way Charlie, um, uh, the way he described it. So in the packet that I gave you, the last item, is his, the report from Charlie's office. Um, and I'd like to go over the items that we still need to do. Um, we need to crack seal the very fine um, cracks that are in the pavement that was done uh, back in 2006. And um, the uh, item two is the pavement immediately surrounding the manhole cover at the end of Lynn Road needs to be cut and um, replaced. The cracks around that don't radiate more than six or eight inches. It's not huge and if you're interested I can show you, oh no, I'm sorry, that's, I have a, a, a map, a, a, a large map of the unit that shows where those manhole, that manhole cover is. But it's not a huge job, according to Bill Andre, that's a rather simple item to take care of. Um, the cul-de-sac uh, on Lynn Road needs to, um, had some of the um, curbing it was just jutting out probably half an inch to three quarters of an inch at most. And we've pushed that back in. Now we have no idea what's happened with the snow and you know if the plows hit those and, and kind of pushed them out again. But that's something we can easily take care of um, to start. The guys in our neighborhood can take care of that. Um, the end of the sidewalk at Bashant Way, and I have a large uh, blow up of that with a highlight of the area I'm talking about. Would you like to see that? Sure. Oh, I'll pass that out. area is the area that uh, Charlie was talking about in item four. Um, it is a, a little piece of sidewalk that's probably six feet to eight feet long, and not, much, not longer than that. Um, and there's a manhole cover 
at one end where the electrical um, wires or whatever they have <laughs> under, in, underground um, are accessible through that manhole. So it's, that's the sewer manholes are out in the street, but that's an electrical manhole cover. Um, and Jolly was concerned that if just after that manhole cover, it kind of drops off uh, uh, according to the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's, it's a little bit too high for that, or too quick a drop. And so what we proposed is that we would um, uh, even out the, the street and extend it into right where I've highlighted onto the sidewalk that's in front of the driveway. And, um, or it, we could depress the manhole cover um, with the calling NSTAR to see if, if they could do that for us. Um, and so that's another possibility. But that's something that we're working on, waiting for the snow to go so we can get at that. Um, and um, the item five, was there any questions about that issue? Okay. Uh, item five uh, was the meets and bounds and they have signed off that that is done and complete. Um, the, Item six, the drainage swales, um, they're in good condition. Again, with all the snow, some sediment might have gone into the swales and our uh, people in our residence all get out with their wheelbarrows and, and we'll clear that out and make sure that that's draining well. Um, it, it was, it's been draining well. Nobody's had uh, water in their, um, basements. Um, in fact, as I drove here tonight, uh, I could see um, that they were, there was water in those swales now and, and not snow on top. So I, I'm assuming, and I you know you shouldn't assume things, but that, the, that it's, it's moving because if it was <coughs> stagnant and totally full, the snow would probably be consistent right over those swales. And I, it's like a little creek or river. You can see the, the water going down there. Um, item seven is the signage on our streets. And we, the town has put up, this was several years ago, um, signs stating children. Uh, we have lots of young children and they tend to play in the cul-de-sacs and ride their bikes and that sort of thing. So the town put up signs in three locations stating um, children. Our homeowners association's covenants indicate that no car should go more than 15 miles per hour um, on the streets. And the signs help people recognize that they should not be speeding down the streets. But both streets are relatively short, ending in cul-de-sacs, so people don't generally spe speed there anyway. Um, another f part of our covenants as a homeowners association, um, it was stipulated in 2004 when our trust was put together that, um, and, and the trust is filed at the Registry of Deeds in uh, Plymouth County in Plymouth. And uh, it states that there's to be no overnight parking in our neighborhood. Um, so we attached uh, signs just under the children's sign saying no overnight parking so that anyone visiting or um, somebody who we didn't know just decided to come and, and park overnight in our uh, neighborhood would know that, that their car would be towed if, um, if they were there uh, one, two in the morning. So we felt it was important to put signs up. I've talked to the selectmen about that and they feel that that's fine. I, if I need to go to the road commissioners, I will talk to them about that, whether we can leave those signs up or not. Um, and then item eight, the last item, um, is uh, small sections of binders. Um, the, uh, in three households <coughs> next to their driveway, there are small triangles of um, 
where the ground is a little depressed next to the pavement of the sidewalk in their driveway. So this like little triangle section is about that big. And what our plan was that we would have asphalt put in there um, and fill that in. Uh, Charlie was concerned if somebody's walking along the sidewalk, they might step down and turn an ankle or something like that. So if we fill that in, he said we could put grass there, put, uh, and we thought it would be best just to put the asphalt in if we've got the paver coming out to do that manhole cover, and that's so that um, most of these things could probably, it's our hope, and I'm ever the opt optimist, <laughs> that it would take more, no more than a day or two to get these all done. We are talking to three pavers to get quotes of what this will be. Um, Bill Andre has walked the streets with Charlie and the trustees, and so he does know exactly what needs to be done. Um, and the other two have not seen the streets as yet. But uh, they're all relatively minor, and our hope is that we can get them done in time so that we can um, appear at the um, town hall, uh, our next meeting, uh, town hall, I'm sorry, the <laughs> next town meeting in April and uh, have our warrant accepted. So are there any questions or concerns? Questions? Go ahead, Donna. Um, I was surprised. I was at the selectmen's meeting last last week, and they were very apologetic that your roads ha hasn't been accepted as we speak because it it seems to have satisfied the majority of the things, the issues that that you're, you're looking for. The only thing that um, I was under the impression that the town wasn't looking to take over except streets because of the financial burden that it was going to be. But I didn't get that from the selectmen's meeting. I got that they, as a matter of fact, they, they approved it 100%. Um, I, you know, as far as what's, I mean, the road is, I mean, I've been down the road a couple of times. The road's in great shape. They have, Mr. Andrade's a great contractor. If the town's willing to, to accept the financial responsibilities that are gonna come along with this road, this is going to open the door for a lot of other roads that are going to be looking because everybody's watching. If the town accepts this road, you're going to be lined up with a lot more looking for them. And the only other thing that I can say is you're, you're not going to be able to tow cars from parking in front of your streets if the town accepts this road. I mean, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, if it's on your property, you can do it, but you can't do it if it, the t if it belongs to the town unless they, they make it a they go down and make your street no parking zone, but I, I don't see that happening. But I have no objection. If, if, if the town says they've got the money to take over roads, then hey, I guess they've got it. I guess there's actually some sort of regulation. I don't know, so I'd have to look it up, but it has to do with the width of a road, mm -hmm. and you can't have overnight on-street parking, because even where I am off of Cremisa, it's always been um, a few police officers over the years have come down and say you need to move these cars. They're not technically supposed to park overnight on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, you can get towed, but there's tons of people that do do it. Our, our roads are very narrow, and when you come out of Bashant Way, which I do frequently, yeah. um, if there is a car parked on the side of the street, um, the other cars are uh, forced to uh, come on the left side of the street, and I've seen a police cruiser and a school bus almost go head on uh, because there's fences and you can't really see what's coming. Um, I had the school bus almost hit me head on because there was a car parked oh, in the street and they couldn't, um, they were over on, on the left side just as, as I was pulling up. So um, th that's been the concern is the streets are very narrow and there's barely enough room for two cars right. to, to go. So. Um, go ahead, Tom. Are there storm drains? Yes, yes. Uh, um, wait, oh, wait a minute. No, I don't believe there are. So what, where does the water runoff goes into these three uh, uh, we do. We have, yeah, areas? We have swales and we have, um, and I think it's on the map, um, uh, um, go, um, 
going brain dead here for a minute. I can't think of what you call them. They're depressed areas where the water will go off in a runoff Catch ditches. Catch basins. Cat you, you, ought to, Cat thank you. <laughs> you ought to consider making those rain gardens so that the water is there and is absorbed there and doesn't go anyplace else. We've talked about that, yes. I'd, I'd like to see that happen, yeah, definitely. If it's the towns, we'll have to pay for it. What she said? She said if it's the towns, we'll have to pay for it. Well, the town no, has... No, this is on their property. Yeah, yeah the oh, town the has property? said they're not going to accept the catch basins or the uh, swales. That will be the homeowner's responsibility. Go ahead, David. It, it's my understanding. Uh, thank you. Th first of all, thank you very much for coming before us, and uh, we appreciate all the work that's involved in going through this. You've been at this... Well, this is the second town meeting, at least, that you've been doing it. Uh, I know that in the previous one, again, you had not completed the work. Mm -hmm. And before I believe that I personally can vote for it, I have to make sure that the planning board has looked at it and said that it's appropriate and, and acceptable to them. Mm -hmm. Have you gone before the planning board? Yes, uh, Monday, uh, two days ago. And their response was? Um, they um, felt that they could... Uh, give us a little uh, extra time to get these things done once the snow melts, and it melted well today. I hopefully you keep that up. Um, and they would like to see us again on the 13th, and um, so there's another board meeting then. And the 13th uh, of April. April. 13th so, of April, exactly. So we, we will not hear from the planning board and get their approval until the 13th of April. That's correct. Yes. All right. Yeah. And that they, um, Alan Slavin indicated that even if we get this all done by just before the town meeting, and as long as Charles Rowley has approved it and everything is there, that they will let it go forward. Um, and he was going to meet with the planning um, department. The planning department prior to that too. Yeah, the other the meeting on April thirteenth would, would be um, a uh, seeing where we are with the process. So our hope is that we can get the uh, papers and hopefully um, uh, we really liked um, Bill Andre he seemed to be one that could do all of this and he indicated it would only take a few days. So we just need to have the snow gone and let him be able to get in with his equipment and um, and just take care of it all at once. Well, as you know, the reason that the planning board and the planning department have to approve it is that, mm -hmm. uh, as Donna Bronx said, the town, once we take it, it's our responsibility and it comes out of everybody's pocket and out. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that the required upgrades be made before the town accepts it. We understand so that. I, th I think that yeah. I personally cannot vote to approve it until I hear from the planning board and they've accepted it. But yes. I think you made a very good presentation and uh, you. appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Dominic, go ahead. Madam Chair, sorry I was late. What bring seems your mic, to <coughs> bring your mic down, Dominic. Please. Sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry I was late. What, is there any major problem that I missed with this, um, with this petition? I mean, I've actually, you know, plow you those two roads. I, 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 I There's didn't. another packet. I, I know them real well. I've okay. actually plowed on them. I mean, they're brand new. I mean, it's a great little development. I mean, it seems really nice. I, I don't, I mean, it looks like it has uh, underground utilities, if I'm correct. There's no poles. I mean, everything looks brand new. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, you know, I can't see, I mean, if the town and everything, the plan is everything think it's right or it's in the right direction, from what I've seen of it, I don't have a problem with it. Thank you. Alan, go ahead. If I can give you some background. The way the system works is uh, if someone wants a, a road accepted, that's a private road, they have to first petition to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen then take that petition, send it to the Planning Board. The Planning Board then investigates, hires an engineer. That engineer uh, basically comes back to the Planning Board with a recommendation. Uh, the issue we have here, we've been working on this for close to two years. Uh, and basically Mr. Riley, who's the engineer for the town at this point in time, uh, came up with a list of things and it just didn't get done in time last year. And unfortunately, we're running up against the time level. We will basically, at this point, uh, we could actually vote for this 
as late as the, the, mo the day of town meeting, right, yeah. which we've mm -hmm. done before. And the planning board can also meet before and vote and give us an okay as well. So it's just a matter of procedure. If town meeting accepts the road, uh, the way this works is the Board of Selectmen still has the final say whether the road will be accepted or not. Uh, the Homeowners Association owns, I think, two or three pieces of land, which is theirs and their responsibilities. The road commissioners are the ones that make any determinations on signs on the street, no one else. So right, I yeah. hope that answers all your questions. But we're just going with normal procedure, and unfortunately, everything's not in place yet. That's why we didn't vote in favor of it uh, yesterday, because it's on hold till we have a final answer. We can't actually until the planning board says yes. So there's a bunch of checks and balances on how this works all the way through. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, I mean, the, the Homeowners Association, now they plow the road, they do any maintenance that's necessary, curbing, that's all been being done? Uh, the curbing we take care of, the town has been plowing our, our streets. Okay. As you remember, we agreed as a board that we would continue plowing those roads that we had plowed before until we get our private and public roads completely uh, okay. leveled out so we know which is which. All right, so that, that was my question. last year for that. I just circle streets, it's pretty easy to plow. Yeah. Mm. I just, I mean, does your homeowners association, do the residents all understand that this road gets accepted by the town? I mean, it follows in the wait in line of everybody else. I mean, there are certainly roads in, in within the town that are in dire need of repair. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not going to have that independent ability to fix something themselves once, you know, once the town owns the road, the town owns the road. Mm -hmm. sure we understand yeah. that okay. and we are going to be persistent if we're not accepted um, in April. We're going to, again, petition in <coughs> October and I, I, we, just we will just continue to petition until we we get it accepted. Okay. That's our... I just want to make sure everybody understands what happened. Anybody <laughs> else have any questions? Very thoroughly presented. Mm. Yes. Good yeah. job. Thank you. I've had that. some practice now because no. I've been doing it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> a few times. <laughs> Madam Chairman. <laughs> Um, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I, I, I would second the, the presentation and everything's very good. I think you're finding that we're dealing with, with our responsibility as it falls in order in the town. Absolutely. That's the only issue. So um, mm -hmm. I would recommend that the committee postpone any decision on this until the eve of the town meeting because we generally meet for a few things like this. Then we'll know where the planning board is. You mean until, until we know what the planning board says? Yes, okay, until that's we know what the, that's why I just added that, but until we know what the planning board says, mm -hmm. which Madam will probably Chair. be <laughs> that evening, just yes. for the, the folks. Ma Madam we Chair. understand that. Yes, Thank Dominic. You. What would the difference make if we voted for it tonight? I'll wait it. I mean, if, if we vote in favor of it, the planning board turns it down and they turn it down. We shouldn't? Okay, all right. Thank we you, have Chair. it, and um, I'm looking ahead because <laughs> We're going to print before the planning board meeting. Okay. And we, we, had, we did this, I think, the last so time we around, We should too. just write it up so then. I, I, I would probably entertain a no action vote at this time I, and no, bring I'm, it up just prior to town meeting. That's, that's the Madam right Chair, to do what I said. Mad, yeah, Madam Chairman, I, I make a motion that we vote no action on this article. I would second. Until the, until the planning board has fully, is fully satisfied and... Um, Everything has been taken care of. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll second the motion as long as we write in there uh, not enough information to vote at the time of printing. Okay. Uh, pe I'm pending the planning board. Um, uh, pl a pending planning board's approval. Planning approved. board public hearing, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Madam Maybe Chair. Can you tackle that one for me? Um, why don't we just vote no action at this point? That's what we That's got what on the floor. Without, without the other oh, no, I caveats. Know. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, we're going to put that in the writing. That's what we're I gonna, mean. I mean, as far as the explanation as to why we voted no action at the time of print. That's fine. I would, I would vote no action. I would not vote no action with all the caveats that we've no. discussed. That's fine. No. That's fine. That's no, the motion the on the floor is no action at this time on Article 21? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. So it doesn't mean we're, we're not approving it, but we are, this, our recommendation pamphlet goes to print on the 13th. Mm -hmm. Generally what we do um, just prior to town meeting, the finance committee meets 
um, and we will um, reconsider any votes that we feel we have additional information on to make a decision. Um, so we will probably do that with your article just prior to town meeting. So you may get a different something else at, at town meeting, but as printed in, in our handout is going to be a no action vote for right now. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thank you That's so much. Problem. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Um, I think I lost my agenda again. I do this all day. All right, I am going to bring back up to the town administrator. Mr. Town Administrator. Hello. How are you today? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm, I'm just ducky. It was 52 air. degrees today. You bet. And it was wet, so who wasn't ducky? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been very, very helpful for clearing out the uh, the ice. Yes. And yes. helping us remove it. So. Amen. I'm sure Except for those few pretty park benches downtown. Oh, they didn't ooh, quite make it. See what happened to some of them? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> been the way too much weight from the snow yeah there's uh, easy, easy fix though i think mother nature's tough yeah. so. but it's just a war it should be an easy fix yeah are you concerned about no lifeguards in the potholes <laughs> not only the potholes the, the snow and the hot beds and some of the new ones broke some of the boards <laughs> you and them um, are a little heavy what I have for you tonight is the uh, just an update off of the governor's uh, proposed cherry sheet aid for the town of Wareham. These are what we would receive uh, for the purposes of looking at it towards our budget. You'll see in the offset receipts section, I removed the numbers from there because the offset receipts we don't actually budget; they would go directly uh, to the to the schools and such. Uh, but they did see a dramatic reduction in their school choice receiving as well. Uh, ultimately, it impacts their expenditures, uh, their ability to expend, but not the, not the general fund budget. Uh, you'll see that you have the FY 2015 cherry sheet estimate. Uh, one of the interesting things is last year we ended up budgeting less than, uh, less than what we received, as you remember, we always budget the governor's numbers and uh, Governor Patrick was always uh, uh, very conservative in, the, in his budget as far as what the legislature's actually got through was usually higher in local aid. That's one of the ways that we've been uh, able to make sure that we've got some free cash or offset for <coughs> large increases such as snow and ice deficits. So it's worked out well for us this year. We obviously have a large snow and ice deficit. Uh, you'll see the third column is just the difference between what was, what was the cherry sheet estimate from the uh, from the state, and you know, ironically enough, the they'll always be called an estimate until the last day of the fiscal year because they can always reduce aid right up to the last day, so or increase assessments as well. You'll see then the fourth column is just what we budgeted in 2015. The uh, fifth FY16 proposed versus FY15 budgeted. So you'll see we had some extra funds. And again, that helps us offset our snow and ice deficit. Also, 
you know, we, if you remember, we were hit with the increase in the school choice sending mm -hmm. this year, so it helps offset that. Uh, you know, it was unrestricted general government aid. Unfortunately, that aid is not going to go to the general government. It's going to go to cover some of the deficits, but it is what it is. So, um, you know, if you go to the final section, you'll see when talking about the uh, the FY16 deficit of about 2.2 million, two things have happened in the uh, in the governor's estimates. One is the assessments were lower than what we projected, which is which is good. Hopefully, won't be hit with another mid-year increase in FY16. Um, the second item is that the, the uh, we actually received additional general government aid. And this, uh, this on the bottom what tells you what happened. So the school increase in state aid actually was a reduction. So the increase was negative 46,696,000. ,000. The school increase in state and county assessments was $395,930. So all told in the uh, state assessments plus reduction in aid, the, for the FY16 budget, the net increase in school aid is negative $442,626. Where are you on that? Where are you? No. Right down bottom. Back to the second page. Uh, you'll see the town increase in state aid was $157,611. The town increase in state and county assessment, so that's actually a negative, was $2,231. So the net increase in town aid was $155,380. So the 2,232 is a negative number. Yeah, it's an okay. increase in our assessment, but just trying okay. to. Yeah, I got it. And if you flip a page over, I'll show you what the difference in assessments are. And the main one is the uh, retired teacher's health insurance. Um, that's going to cost us a little over an additional $77,000, which isn't, you know, it's not too bad at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the, the regional transportation, which is regional transit, so that's our GATRA and such. So our assessments increased by about 4700 Special education, uh, we've uh, increased so an extra cost of $35,440. And then the major ones are the school choice sending plus the school uh, charter school sending increase of 283000 What does that mean to if we increase school sending? Because we're a net exporter, right? So yep, money goes to us or some, it goes to somebody else? Right? No, this is school choice sending. School choice sending. sending. So if we're sending them out, we're losing the revenue. Um, go ahead, Donna. Mr. Sullivan, um, I know there was a big article in um, regarding the charter school reimbursement and stuff. Is, is any decisions been made at the governor's level about how that's going to be resolved to charter schools? Well, if you look back on the aid section, you'll see the charter tuition reimbursement. Yep. FY15 was 193000 For FY16, it's 66000 and change. Okay. So our change is... Where is that? Where? I'm sorry. On the, fir on the page, the local aid. Okay. So, so when you're talking about uh, revenue, okay, that's local it. aid. Oh, when you're talking oh, about yeah. cost, that's the assessments. So when you see, it, we've actually... The schools lost out on 126, almost 127,000 in aid because of the charter school reimbursements. Wow. So. That's like two thirds. Hmm. That is a big hit. Huh? Big hit. Yeah. That's what he said he was going to do, though. <clears throat> yeah, he did. Yeah, he announced yeah. that that's what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, they're working to eliminate that program, though? Right? Just reduce it. Reduce it? I mean, reduce it, but you reduce it that much, it's almost like start of an elimination well it's not the charter schools that are penalized in it it's the communities the that communities. are sending the children to the charter it's, it's, schools it's us. right so you look at it either way you're right yeah you know, this would be the amount of income that the town or the state would give to wareham to, to cover it. charter school expenditures. right right all right so they've reduced that by 126 000. so it's, co so it's quite it's 
it's costing the Wareham taxpayers. <laughs> Correct. Yep. yep. To send these kids to the charter schools. <coughs> Hmm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a huge hit. May I ask a question? Go ahead. How, how is the gap coming with the school department? Where are we with their budget? Mm -hmm. um, with this, it would be the, well, you have two budgets. You have a balanced budget. And then you've got the uh, the requested budget. Yeah, but yours, yours is the only one that's balanced right now. Correct. How, how is how is the school budget coming? Are we? Um, I I haven't seen a reduction number from them yet. Is there an expectation of when you will see one? Uh, we're going to be meeting tomorrow, so hopefully I'll get a number from from them on what their uh, what their plan is. Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm surprised we haven't met with them yet. I have made myself available, um, but it's really a work between the two sides as to where they can meet in the middle. Um, I mean, if two members want to make tomorrow's meeting, they're more than welcome. What time? I would what just time keep it, it down to two. Uh, huh? Should be 4.30. 4.30. Where? I'd be happy to go. Uh, in the, here in the superintendent's office. Might have to move over here, depending on... That's right, too, yeah. I'm going to the Upper Cape one tomorrow. That's at 6.30. 6.30. I really think somebody should go. I'm going to be at the um, Upper Tech one, too, Madam Chair. Okay, that's Although tomorrow that's not till six thirty. That's tomorrow at 6.30. Yeah. Okay, do I have a volunteer to attend with me? You're about to have a Bueller moment there. Must have what? I will attend. Bueller, Bueller. Um, <laughs> and if, if I could get one other I mean, member. It's at three. How long do you expect it to be there? I, I, oh, no, okay. Okay. I, I'd be happy to go from 4.30 to 6.00. I was going to say, yeah, I, we could I go, go for a little while beforehand. Because um, I had already committed myself to the Upper Cape meeting, mm -hmm. but um, I would really like to go, um, Madam Chair, and if, if Mr. Hurd can't make it. Okay. I'll give you a buzz. All right, thank you. Okay. I'll quit before Let me know, David. Yeah, and just for the record, it's not a subcommittee at any level, so it's pure, uh, just pure talks. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, well, then that should be. It's a chat. <laughs> that should be quick, right? <laughs> Gotta have a chat. <clears throat> Being facetious, Derek. <clears throat> so Donna's not coming? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. Where did you say it was going to be? Uh, superintendent's office. Isn't that in this building across the right hall? Here? Right across. Right across the hall. Okay. Busy there, Mom. Okay. What else you got for us? Well, those were my main points. That's what I wanted the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. I had a, a FinCom member here who's really, really, really <clears throat> excited about having a five-year projection and who is even willing to help you out with that. I think that once we get a balanced budget, we'll, we'll go into five-year projection mode. Okay. Well, Mr. Langdon yeah, has volunteered. I'd be happy to help you with that one, too. Yeah. I think we owe it to the town because I think it was so good last year that we want to keep the level of excellence. Well, it, it, yeah, and it, it, doesn't it say in our bylaws that we're supposed to have one? Yeah, we we've already put the five year out, so you'd need one next year. Yeah, three every three years get updated, yeah, right? So I think you could get a few years. Two years, he said. Two years. I, like I, I would just love to sit with you and pardon me, Madam Chair. If you extrapolate the averages of the five year and then add it in the sixth year, yep. it gets very interesting. We have a good time. Yeah, it. it uh, I don't know what you want to call the cliff, but. I'm not sure it's real, but, <laughs> but you just do averages and it gets yeah. quite interesting. <clears throat> okay, um, let's just review what, what we've got going here for Can articles um, before you go. Sure, I'm gonna still yeah. need numbers on um, compensation for appointed officials. 
The other thing okay. we didn't have was the clerk salary. That's the one you're missing? Yep. All right. Okay. Registrar was 700, 700 per annum. Yep. Kelly, do you mind catching up with me tomorrow? We'll have a list. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Article 5, um, thoughts on your capital plan? Anything? No, we, I won't have that for a little while. Okay. Okay, and of course, budget is six. We're not going any with that. Um, and I hear there is is a budget for Upper Cape? Yep, public on it is tomorrow night. Public hearing on it is tomorrow. Okay. okay. I'll, yep. get, uh -huh. I'll get you a complete package. What's that? I'll, and I'll make copies All for right, everybody. I have, asked, it. I have it. I mean, uh, he asked about the 25th. Do need to see it? Like the summer. I don't okay. know if I should give it up for a public or not. Probably not. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll hear it tomorrow, and then we'll bring it up. I mean, it's a, it's a, whatever. I won't say anything. Yeah. It's if you tomorrow. look at our budget, am I? Are we in the ballpark? Do I need to? I think it's. Do I need a cry? What was the increase last year? It was like two, two, two. Last year we we had a reduction, but the projection for this year, I think we were at about one hundred ninety-three thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. For Cape okay. Okay. Yeah, there's. we know 2. we have 12 9. new students from Wareham there, which has its own cost. Mm -hmm. And then I think we estimated a 2% a increase overall to their regular budget. So. 2.9 two, two, two two here. That's what you have here, 2.9. Yeah, that's so which. One. I can tell you that it's under that. Yeah. A little less. Yep. All right. 2.7, 2.6. Cool. Really? Yep. Okay. All right. Mazel so three, so. That much, I promise you. All right, then. All right. Can we high five um, later? <laughs> <laughs> Don't come home without that. Dominic. <laughs> you better not be wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong. Uh, that's off the record. Maybe no, it's under that. That's off. off the record. Do I shut the mic off? All right. Um, Dominic did speak um, with Upper Cape about scheduling a joint meeting, and we were tentatively, Mr. Board of Selectmen, of, of arranging a joint meeting for March the 25th, correct? That's the day he's going to come speak for us. And yes, if, if and we'd like him to be able to do it once. If he wants to do it okay. together, we are inviting the BOS to attend on March the 25th. Okay. This time, 6.30. Regular 6.30. We'll get him in and out. We'll do that. I think that's nice to have once. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see what else are we missing here. So we're up to that. There was one for the uh, funding the WPCF mm -hmm. capital city. So that's a pass over because I mean he's not going to put any. There were, okay. Well, so we're good. Yeah. Were you going to? Eleven. Eleven. We're going to pass over at this point. Two words. I put pass over once and it was the holiday. <laughs> now, which article is this? That's the actual funding of the stabilization fund for the water pollution bad. control oh, facility. Yes, be <laughs> because there is no funding source at this point. All right. Um, 18 has been a rant of discussion over um, the CPC reserves, and I spoke to. Um, the CPC about this and she was going to change the article and I've been with the town moderator on this. The article can't be changed the way it already says in here where it says increase the reserves even though we haven't established the reserves. We withdrew our vote on this. Um, the motion is going to be different. The motion is actually going to say to establish the reserves um, not to increase them. So I don't know how we actually take a vote on this because we're going to be voting on what's going to be a motion later, not what has actually been handed to us. Does Madam Moderator have any suggestions on that? Madam her? Moderator is shaking her head over there too. <laughs> <laughs> Saying I'm right. <laughs> huh? 
Well, we have that number before town meeting. The number doesn't change, change. It's just the wording, just the wording. is going right. to be different. The way it's published, the public has had public notice that these are the figures that you're going to be voting on. Okay. So it's within the scope of the article to leave the article as it is rather than pulling it or passing over it. And we'll just make sure that in the motion it probably will just say um, to see if the town will establish the 10% reserve. So it's basically the same. Can we can have somebody am amend it right then and there? You don't, need do to amend, you don't need to amend it. If you do the motion right off the bat, you don't need any amendments. Oh, Just come Chair. right out on the Madam floor as, as your motion being to establish the reserves. Madam Chair, can we take a no action with the explanation being that this is going to happen and that way people know? I, know, I don't think that you need Madam to take Chair, a no action. I, I mean, no. it's just semantics. It's, yeah, it's just, a, it's just, it's just semantics. of it. Um, no. We Madam did Chair, understand you know, what it was supposed to say. In if the, first the number is not changed, then the outcome is not going to change, so I don't think it should affect the vote. Words, you know, finance, you know, the finance is going to be the same outcome. Exactly. So it, won't, it won't affect our tax <coughs> recap sheet. Right, it's not going to so. affect anything because the numbers but are the same. That's this, my this is, a, this is such a small detail that you ought to try to get by it as fast as you can. Well, that's why I say if you just do the motion to establish, all you're doing is, is taking out the word increase. Mm -hmm. so I have no problem with changing. that. I just want a motion on this floor yep. and a vote as to what our our motive is and what our action is on this I make a motion, article. I make a motion for favorable action on Article 18. Second. I have a motion for favorable action on Article 15. Is it 18? On Article 18, 18, the reserves for CPC established at 81.2, 81.2, 2, and 81.2, 40,006. Total of $284,200. The numbers don't change. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Go ahead, Ellen. Um, I was getting to that. I was trying to like figure out where to throw that in. The Board of Selectmen, Madam Chair, the Board of Selectmen's vote was? 400 I have here. I gave Bonnie a copy of uh, what was recommended. Claire gave us more than several options. Uh, what we did is we polled the board yes and no on, any, on five of the articles last night. Mm -hmm. uh, which was a little confusing for the board because they were not used to it because it is a change. And then after we basically got the vote, then I asked for a motion to, uh, to approve the, you know, the article for town meeting or to not approve recommendation. Uh, you can do it a different way. You can basically go ahead and have a motion to approve the article for town meeting. And if the vote is negative, that means the motion fails. And then you come back a second time and make a motion not to approve the article for town meeting. That way the number that you see makes sense to your action. What we've done for the last five, six years, we vote favorable action and you get a vote of like three, six, yeah, zero. Number, yeah. And it's <coughs> always been confusing to people. The only thing that's different, I think, Claire, so we most likely would have to do, if we have a, not a unanimous vote, you're probably gonna have to list the name of the, of the, of the people on the dissenting side. Yeah. Yes or no, we don't have to go that way? Never mind. Simple as that. The way I did it last night, I think we would have had to do it, but this will change the next week. That's what we did last night. And again, it's only to make it simple so people know what we're really saying. Sure. I know that people, when they come to town meeting and they see it, they, come, they just don't understand. Favorable so, action is favorable action. They don't look at the numbers. You know? They hear favorable yeah, action and they just right. don't hear anything. So I just right. wanted to fix it once and for all. So that's what we did. I just I kind of forced it last night. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I please have the recap of that vote, please? Which vote? When we just took it's nine zero zero eight zero one. Who abstained? David. David. Okay. Well, I'm not missing Eight zero one. Thank you. Um, okay. So, uh, with that, the way this work reads, it says it's it says recommends. Um, <coughs> the finance committee recommends approval of this article. Vote and then whatever our vote is. 
Um, we, if you want to go ahead and adopt that the same way that the Board of Selectmen did, I just don't want to get jumbled up too much on this report where we're listing the vote here. If we want to take this line out with, with the, in other words, you're saying this Board of Selectmen voted, you're going to type this, the Board of, Board of Selectmen voted approval of this article, vote, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then if you want to do the Finance Committee voted approval of this article, then our vote, underline that, and then continue with what our recommendation is. Does that make it a little less mm. jumbled? Go ahead, David. And in the event we do not approve it, instead of approved, you'd say yeah, there's not the a Finance Committee not. voted not to approve. Yeah, uh, underneath that, the, the, the negative would read, the Finance Committee does not recommend approval of this article. And then under that would be our reason why. That, well, it would also have the vote. I mean, we... Right, exactly. It would be the vote of whatever. But, yeah. but I think David's asking is recommend approval 050. Zero zero no. Would be, then you're saying the explanation would explain the five negatives. And that's the reason we don't recommend approval. I would, I would prefer I that you're saying, but it's we would either say we approve it or we did not approve or did not recommend approval. You can do it either way. Do you want no numbers? Is that what you're saying? Or you want a, a reason for a vote? I don't mind the numbers. I just would like to say that either the Finance Committee approves the article or disapproves the article. That's the, that's the, two, um, the two options, OK? It would either say. I'm going to hand this down to you. Hand this down with Circle Davis so you can see what it looks like visually. Because I went through a lot of them that uh, Madam Moderator printed out. And some of these, some of these can be really confusing. Okay, the, well, you've got fin the Finance Committee recommends approval of this article with a vote, or the Finance Committee does not recommend approval of this article. Yes, yeah. and then under that would, would be our explanation for You're either approval you don't, or not approval. Don't say any approval. Approval is a, I mean, they're going to, that's a word they jump on and they say yes, that's acceptable. That like that I vote against or for. I would prefer just against or for. What was that? I would prefer just against or for this article. Any article just trying to do consistent to what the Board of Selectmen is doing, well, we'll do so it's not typing two different things. Now. And this is what they've adopted. I just don't think you've, written, you've gotten perfect yet. You're, 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 I'd give it a B minus. Mm -hmm. We voted recommends approval of the not recommends approval. We thought that was a, a, a sentence that wants to get us a little If you're satisfied with the B minus, I mean, B minus is fine for first time. Use your mics. I'm going to get you in trouble if you're going to have a discussion. When I was in school, I had a, a D, D plus with this. It's a passing grade. Community college is going to be free anyway, so you don't have to cheat. Well, because normally we had income recommendation like that. Community college was pretty close to being three when I went. Okay. It was $150 a semester. Really? In 1972. Okay. Yeah, one, right. $150 a semester in 72. That's the cost of a book now. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on yeah. what book you're getting. No kidding. Yeah. I went to, yeah, I went to Cape Cod in 72. It was $150 a semester. Probably had a couple of zeros. That's what it is. Yeah, but I don't know what it costs now. What was a loaf of bread? What did a loaf of bread cost then? That was an 18 cent Big Mac. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right, why don't you like do one more for me? Okay, thank you. Okay, let's get back to business. Um, our town administrator is nodding off over here. Um, I don't really have anything else for you unless anybody else on the board has any questions. Will the town administrator at this time? Cut them free to go home. Here, on this piece of paper in the upper right hand corner of um, the, so. the school committee, uh, full size yeah. schedule is three million six hundred and eighty four thousand nine hundred and sixty four dollars. What is that? 
the FY16 lump sum of the assessments should be on the back, you know, the three. That's what we budgeted, 3684964 And that's the uh, difference between what we budgeted for assessments. Um, then you'll take what the governor put, the 3395259 and that gives you the delta of the 398.161. That should be around there. So it's a 395, 3395. Yeah, not it the. It doesn't um, add up. 3395259 three, nine, versus the. Um, the second column on the bottom. Well, we budgeted. The, top the delta is the delta is the FY15 cherry sheet estimate versus the 2016 governor's proposal. But I wanted you to be able to see what we actually budgeted. So we budgeted. Let me see if I can paraphrase this. We budgeted. 289,705. Yeah, which is underneath that, under the assessments. If you follow the far right assessments, you see 289,705, which is the difference. Oh, all right. So the assessments are money that the town has to spend. Correct. You budgeted that we'd have to spend 3.8 million. 3.68. Whatever, six. Okay. Right there. Right. Okay. Yeah, what well, we and took. The governor to say he'll back 3.3. <clears throat> yeah, my estimate was based on the mid year $265,000 increase plus the three year average of increases that we've experienced. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, this is, uh, I feel that the governor's number is a little bit generous at this point to what we'll probably actually be hit with if we have any more kids leaving. Yep. Well, right now it's in our favor. Does that read this correctly? By I, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm happy. I just don't if want to If this really it. happens, you just don't believe it's going to happen. I just, I don't like getting hit with the mid-year mid assessment like we did this year. So, you know, so they can finish up and have the, have a nice low number for us. We can balance our budgets and then you get hit with the the mid-year because it was an artificial number it's it's just not effective so but this does not when the uh, when you have a mid-year increase talk to the DOR on it. because it's the assessments you don't have to change your budget it just goes off of your fund balance so it reduce your overall fund balance so even though we had the mid-year increase on the assessments that's why you don't see us at town meeting Having to uh, having to change line items or anything. When the, that just means that your the inflow is, you know, the assessment's going up, so you got to find money to still pay it, right? Yeah. Well, when you with your assessments, what they do is they take your local aid, yeah, and then your local aid is reduced by the assessments. Okay, then you so receive the net revenue. On so this it. is coming out of our local aid. Correct. Right. At the end of the day, is what really happens. Right. This is. Yeah. And they used to do quarterly. Now they've changed it to monthly, and that's that's fine. So the, the the way the towns folks ought to read this thing, for example, is last year uh, they said we were we were spending six hundred and some odd thousand dollars on students that were transferring or getting educated outside of the town. Correct. This year they're estimating we're going to spend nine hundred thousand dollars on it. Right, and the nine nineteen is and actually coming out of our school budget. One way or another. Right. The FY16, that 919 is actually what we're spending in this fiscal this year. year. But that's your number then, Eric, the number that's No, going. that's that's what we're actually spending. So we had a mid year increase from the six sixty seven to nine nineteen. To nine nineteen. Oh. And so they're just bringing forward the nine nineteen. So they're just putting it in cement. Yeah. Well as loose as unless we have more more, yeah. yeah. But okay, is that discussion up? Are we good? Yes? I needed education. Thank okay. you. Okay, so I'm just checking. Okay, I can go back to meeting. Okay. Um, <laughs> as far as um, Article 19 with the roof, um, the Deacus school roof, is it my understanding, as far as you know, that's going to be coming out of the school budget? The, um, if you're talking about they need to do an assessment like we did yes. on the high school yep. roof. Yep. Yeah, the town would not be paying for that. That would have to come out of the school budget. Okay, all right. So we'll have to be re-meeting with them or figure out where it fits within their budget 
before we take a vote on that. All right, one final thing, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Selectman to come back to the mic before I start this discussion. I may need Miss Town Moderator as well. If we can have a third chair. Is this the rose between two thorns? Yes. yes <laughs> um, I, did everybody get, or I guess maybe I'm the only one who got it, um, Richard Bowen's um, legal opinion on the FinCom members that are running for sewer commissioners? Yes, I asked Richard to go and okay. take care of that. I forward the answer to you forwarded the answer to me. So I'm going to, so the rest of you aren't informed about this, so let's, let me read this aloud. Um, you have asked whether the town of Wareham prohibits the finance committee member from holding another town office while serving on the finance committee. You inform me that several finance committee members are running unopposed for the office of sewer commissioner. The sewer commission is a town body established under section 37 of the Wareham Charter as amended and is not the governing body of a separate district or body politic. In my opinion, the town of Wareham's bylaw unequivocally, whew, I should have had that water, unequivocally prohibits anyone from serving simultaneously on a finance committee member and sewer commissioner. I recommend <laughs> that any finance committee member elected to the position of sewer commissioner resign from the Finance Committee before taking the oath of office for the Sewer Commissioner. Um, he quotes General Law Chapter 39 Section 16 provides that a town whose valuation for the purpose of apportioning the state tax exceeds one million dollars must establish a Finance Committee by a bylaw. The town of Wareham complies by adopting Division 1 Article 4 Section 5 of bylaws which as pertinent to your inquiry provides as follows. There shall be a finance committee of nine members who shall hold no other town office in bold, in or be a permanent employee of the town. The language of section five is clear and unequivocal. I cannot say that word. Um, thank you. <laughs> a finance committee cannot hold any other town office. The bylaw has no grandfather clause that protects finance committee incumbents from this prohibition. A sewer commissioner is a town officer, thus any person who is a member of the finance committee and who is elected as a sewer commissioner would no longer be eligible to serve on the finance committee upon taking the sewer commissioner's oath of office and would be deemed to have vacated the finance committee seat. Okay. So. I don't want this to mess up the work we have to do in the next few weeks. I can't lose two members of the FinCom. It wouldn't happen until actually May 1st. That's what I need to know. They could take oath of office as late as May 1st. I, Madam Chairman, I intend to file the injunction against this anyway because my attorney doesn't agree with the wording. So okay. that could prolong it even longer. Maybe. What? Maybe. Well, you, you may end up vacating that office that you got elected to. I might. I think the Richard has another thing in there that if they take oath of office while they're still, cause ma it's mass general an, law. An alternate argument, section five serves as a disqualifier, which prevents a sitting FinCom member from being given the oath of office for sewer commissioner. Following this line, a finance committee member who refuses to resign would be deemed to have refused the sewer commissioner's seat rendering it vacant, see yeah. General Law 41, Chapter 41, Section 10. In order to preempt this challenge, I recommend that upon election of any such person, tender a finance committee resignation before taking the sewer commission oath of office. Okay, so they don't take oath of office till technically May 1st. They can wait till May 1st. Once they're elected, they could take oath of office, but they don't actually start until May 1st because that was the you know, the changeover that was done in Section 8 of the Charter, I think it was 8A or B, well, I forget, eight, it's in Section 8, and it talks about how the changeover works and what the date is going to be. Okay. So they could wait right until that date. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Dominic. Uh, you are Kelly 
When is the term term for finance committee? When when does it end? You're up July. You're June thirtieth anyway. June 30th. You and I are June thirtieth. I can't no, run again. No. So right. You ex right. expect it yeah. to be lost anyway. Right. So but a little early is not going to really make that much no. difference is it in your, my case. You are running opposed though. How no, I'm running right? opposed. You're running so opposed. I want to make sure I got this right. Yeah. Um, but even you if I are get elected, unopposed, and Donna is running unopposed. Right. Okay. Yeah. But even if I get elected, I can resign. It's not going to hurt anybody a month or two right. in advance. Yeah, that's okay. not. I'm not worried okay. about that. But there's that leaves. I'm, four I'm more. Open I'm more concerned about the other, the other part of the unopposed, shoe, which yeah. says if you don't do it, and if you sit there and go to court on it, you may end up. You know that that seat may be vacated. Period. Well, Rich told, uh, Rich, Rich told me I could file an injunction. You can file an injunction, but you might also kick the other half of the trigger over, and you may end up losing your seat as a social commissioner. It's your call. I'm just no. concerned about that. I, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that and what the dates were going forward, because I, I didn't want to wind up halfway through this work and saying, you know, I, I can't operate. I, I'm so happy there are all nine sitting here. This is wonderful. This is unusual, isn't it? Yeah, no, this has been a great work. You guys have been really great about this. Um, so I want to get it done. I don't want to have three people or two people missing before three. Well, yeah, well, te technically he could stay he can, in he can April, stay. Uh, until May 1. Oh. Even if I win or lose, I, I got to get up in June anyway. So right. I'm done. I can't re, right. re up. So, so this should cover. Uh, carry it through the town meeting. So that will carry it through town meeting, which Correct. means right. there will be at least four open chairs, one way or the other, on this finance committee. Correct. Either if, May first, there will be possibly there will if, be two. And if town meeting goes more than two days, then you're going to run into the issue also. Then I'm going to run into an issue. And what's going to happen? Town meeting runs more than two days, the 27th, 28th. Normally, it goes back to the next week. On Monday again, yeah. so you could be oh. at the first of. So it's beyond May first. Mm -hmm. First, and then so, you're going to okay. run into the issue, yeah. Yeah. which means you also could be jeopardizing. Uh, I don't know. Would they be jeopardizing the Hanukkah votes? I don't think no. so. No, we no. would have voted. No. Okay. Yeah, we would have taken our votes. They would have taken votes. their yeah. vote as a member. Yeah, yeah we just no, couldn't they, have any meetings until like those as seats as are filled. Nobody complained. No, because okay. the action was taken while they were serving. So Fine. Yeah. that doesn't change. This is messy. Sorry. All right, it's I just wanted college. to make sure everybody was aware of those dates and what's going to happen. And if there's anybody out there interested in filling a FinCom seat, there is definitely going to be at least two and possibly four. Four openings. And I, I just want to reiterate that, Bonnie, because that will become very crucial going forward yeah. um, to really have some good people. I mean, we've made a lot of strides. It's been a great committee, great people on it. And to keep that continuity. Um, we need to put put it out there that, you know, we want to encourage people if they have an interest to come forward with an application. Yep. All right. That's all I have. Thanks, all three of you, for sitting there while I went through that. Okay. Mr. Town Administrator, you can go home, take a nap now. Yeah, we just wanted to get this in front of you as quick as we could once we realized it was an issue. Yes, and I'm I'm glad I got that. Thank you. Thank Good you, night. sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Figure out what's more important to you, that's all. Well, I don't, I don't mind it, but I don't believe their interpretation is correct. My yeah. attorney. Yeah. All right, I still will try to follow through with the petitioners for Article 20. Um, I'm going to, you know, I, just, I, I can only invite them. I just feel like I'm stalking <coughs> at this point. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so next, next Wednesday, which is the 18th, the Board of Selectmen will be receiving the, spe or will be closing the special town meeting, uh, the 17th, that's what I mean, the 17th they'll be closing the special town meeting, mm -hmm. so we should have a draft version on the 18th. I don't have anything. There are 10 of them? Yeah, yeah last week it was four. Last right? night it was 10. Yeah, no, I understand. <clears throat> As of today, there's 10. Okay. Um, there possibly will be two more. The first one is your general transfers um, from the spring budget. 
and then a capital plan transfer. Um, the Harbor Master has an article um, to transfer into his maintenance and improvement account okay. um, to accept an act to establish a tax title collection revolving fund um, to uh, transfer a sum of money into the OPEB account trust fund. Um, uh, placeholder for the police union contract settlement. Um, there'll be two articles relative to the Agawam Cemetery. One is to rescind a previous action of the Springtown meeting, and then um, the second article will be um, the potential purchase of some land adjoining the cemetery. Okay. And there'll be a liquor license warrant article, and then the Oakdale Playground. A liquor license warrant? Uh, in okay. All right. So, um, so we should have at least a draft of what those are on the 18th. Okay, um, now I lost the thing, okay. Um, do I have any liaison reports? Just at the upper tech meets yep. tomorrow night, that's cool. it. Any other business? <clears throat> Nothing anybody needs to discuss? I need approval of meeting minutes for February 19th, 2015. So moved. Second. All those in favor of approval of the meeting minutes of February 19th, 2015, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. One, abstained. One abstained down there. I don't think I was here last week. You weren't. <laughs> that was yeah. Did you watch it on TV? Um, if anybody has recommendations, they've already um, volunteered to do so. Get those to Kelly so we can clean it up as quickly as possible. I think I have one that I you have to remind me what it was because now I forgot. Um, so we will be meeting next Wednesday on the 18th at 6:30. Right here. Okay. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. On other business, I shouldn't. Go ahead. I will move back to other business. Go ahead. Um, so Kelly's gonna. If you want an electronic version on Monday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that way we get the chance to read it. Because it's not official until the select right. no, yeah. mm -hmm. on it Tuesday and they may, right. something may change, but that's fine. I have one other thing I wanted to ask the opinion of, of the committee before I okayed it. I have had a request for several, uh, or for at least one person, um, to receive um, postings or received e receive email of our agenda when it's posted to this um, to this team here, because he, he is planning on um, joining us in July. Mr. Pitchin is here. Um, does the does the committee have any objection to that uh, member, that person getting email notification along with the rest of this committee? I mean, just the agenda? I mean, just the yeah. agenda, so he knows when meetings are and what's to be discussed. Is that legal, Madam Moderator? I don't know that it isn't legal since Madam Moderator was one who made the request of me. <laughs> if, it's, if it's legal, I have no problem with it. Now, the agenda is actually posted on the, yeah, that's oh, so on that's the right. town yeah. website. It's public. It's yeah. public information. Yeah. It's public information. So it is posted. Yep. Yeah. Whether for anyone, I, I anyone no to look at. I have to doing so. Thank you. I've got extras of these and I'm not sure why. 
right. Okay. Madam anything else? Next to Hillary's email. So that's our next meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Can motion I have a question? Adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, hold on. What? I have one more question. What? No, I'm just curious about the numbers because number 17 is being pulled and putting in the special. Now, will that change that we'll only have 20 on the general? I have no idea. Oh. No, you can't change the way it's printed. I don't know whether. They just pass it over when they come. Just up. pass it over yeah, at the time. It it's mm -hmm. okay. So it stays as is. The numbers yep. will change. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now you can adjourn. Okay. A motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Good night. Swear Thank you, viewers, nationwide. <laughs>